about four months ago, we created the video that's up here, and it was called The Fed Won't You Fire. And got some mixed reactions, got a lot of views, uh, because that's very something that's something that's very sensitive to people about maintaining their jobs, you know, to take care of the household bills and things of that nature. Um, I know it sounded a little crazy out of the box, uh, but of course, on this channel, we follow the data. We don't just sit here and make fear videos and make fear videos. And of course, this is four months ago. So four months ago, people wasn't even talking about the Fed or anything like that, uh, about job losses because of the Fed. And it's just, we reading the tea leaves and we're actually looking at the data and doing the work to see what the Fed is talking about. Um, Jerome Powell said uh, in late 2021, when he was at an investor conference, I believe it was in November of 2021, where he said pain is ahead. Pain is ahead. And it gave the warning shots what was going to happen. And then, of course, this was not put over mass media outlets, you know, unless you're a student of financial news and pay attention to what's going on in the financial sectors on the macro and micro uh, economics, you really didn't even know he said it. But this is coming to fruition. Um, so we put the video out, and then now we're coming back for round two of this video because Jerome Powell, he just said uh, on Congress, and they took him to task for the same thing that we just mentioned in the video four months ago about the Fed wanting to get people fired. So with all that being said, let's get the video started, then me and Alex come back on the other side of it to give a reaction. All right, let's try to unpack this then. <clears throat> I'm not trying to trick you. You're raising interest rates. You're raising interest rates to slow the economy, are you not? Yes, to cool the economy off. Um, and one of the ways you measure your success, other than fluctuation in gross domestic product, is the unemployment rate, is it not? Yes, one of the measures. Okay. So in effect, this, I'm not being critical. When you're slowing the economy, you're trying to put people out of work. That's your job, is it not? Not really. We're trying to we're trying to restore price stability. No, um, you're trying you're trying to raise not, not the wages. you're trying to raise the unemployment rate. There are and, and so there are a lot of mean, that mean I know you don't like the phrase, so let me strike it. You're trying to raise the unemployment rate, are you not? No, we're not trying to raise it. We're trying to realign supply and demand, which could happen through a bunch of channels. Like, for example, uh, you know, just job openings. All job right, let openings. Me, let could... me put it another way, okay? The Economist did a did a wonderful study. They looked at, at at ten disinflationary periods in America, going all the way back to the 1950s. Disinflation is what you're trying to do. It's a slowing in the rate of inflation. Am I right? Yes. In other words, prices don't go down. They just don't go up as fast. Deflation is when prices actually go down. You're trying to achieve disinflation, are you not? Yes, we are. Okay. Based on history, in the 10 times that we got inflation down, disinflation since the 1950s, in order to reduce inflation by 2%, unemployment had to go up 3.6%. Now, that's history, is it not? I don't have the numbers in front of me, but yes, the standard has been that there have been recessions and downturns when okay. the Fed has tried to reduce inflation. Now, right now, the, the current inflation rate is 6.4%, and the current unemployment rate is 3.4%. Now, if history is right, I'm not asking you to, 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 again, blame anybody, but if history is right, unless you get some help in order to get inflation down from 6.4%, to let's say 4.4 percent, and the unemployment rate is going to have to rise to 7 percent based on history. That's what the record would say. Okay, and to get inflation down to 2.2 percent, based on history, an immutable fact, unemployment would have to go to 10.6 percent. Okay, before we get into this video and uh, break down, do our breakdown, our thoughts, and things like that. Uh, for everybody, if you like the content that you're seeing, if you want to get more content of it and want to hear more from us, please hit the subscribe button. With all that being said, Alex, I'll let you start off because I'm always running my mouth about the Fed because I'm just like an economic junkie. So I'll let you start off. What you got? Yeah, I remember doing the last video um, where we were talking about this and like just kind of playing around with 
you know, where do you expect interest rates to be? Where do you expect inflation to be? And, you know, trying to predict the future, basically. And I had texted you when this, uh, when you sent me the video and I said, um, you even called out that interest rates would go to nine to 10% where it was possible. And that's kind of what they were talking on right there is interest rates continuing to rise. You know, if the base was, I think he said 4.5%, raising it to 6.5%. You know, what does that do for mortgage rates? Banks still have to make money on top of that 6.5%. So, you know, are we going to look at the 9% realm or 10%? And um, with that, unemployment as well, um, being at a 10% clip, that uh, there's some great, pretty big numbers. But at the same time, I know you got to, I guess, look at it from, you know, maybe, you know, 10% of the population is unemployed, which is huge for America, but 90% is still not, is still employed. Um, but it's uh, interesting to see what will happen in the in the upcoming future. It's something that will be a new experience for me. Right. And uh, first, let's let's unpack this a little bit. Um and and I like what you said. You said you, if you let's just say hypothetically it reached all the way up there to ten percent unemployment, like the center said. And then you can look at it and say, oh, that means ninety percent of the population is still employed. And I'm not. And this is not political. This is not partisan. Republican, Democrat. It's like this for every president, whatever administration. The unemployment rate that you get is the U three uh, unemployment rate, not the U six. So when they're counting unemployment, when they count unemployment, they're counting people that receive unemployment benefits. So once you once you're not receiving unemployment benefits and you stop looking for a job and you're just out there in the ether doing nothing, you're not counted as an unemployed person. So that national unemployment rate that you see, you know, that we get every month is it's omitting a large part of the population. So then we have another thing called the U6 unemployment. And then they try to gather the data and add those people back in. That's not a headline number, but the reason why they don't use that number, because the number is much higher and it looks better for a president to use the, you know, U3. I think it's U3. It could be U2 or U3, but that's the number that you see on uh, the Friday's jobs report. But the U6 counts, you know, the people that's not on unemployment, that's just out there. You know, it's an estimate, but that's the number. So it's usually the U6 is usually about double, triple what the actual national unemployment rate is already. So if we get to, let's say this hypothetically 10% unemployment, it'll be be it'll be way bigger than 90% of the population employed. It'll be something like 70% of the population employed. That's just uh, my view on it. Um, so with all that being said, yeah, it is, it is crazy to see it. That I mean, especially we deal doing the video, and then now it's coming more into fruition that people are starting to talk about it more when we talked about it, you know, months ago. Um, and there were some other good channels out there that talked about it. But yeah, it's the job. And so people understand the job of the Federal Reserve is to cut to create disinflation. Disinflation. They not their job is not to create deflation. So like the senator said, deflation is when prices go down. Disinflation is just prices are not going up as fast. The Fed want to create disinflation. So when you hear the Fed saying we're tackling inflation, they're not saying, oh, we want the prices to go down. We just don't want the prices to rise as fast as it was. So if you pay $100 for a pair of shoes, and then let's say we're using the 6.4% inflation. So a year from now, just using that on a year-over-year -year basis, 6.4. So then you'll pay $106.40, right? The next year, if it was the same pair of shoes, right? Only thing they want is once you pay that $106, $106, they just don't want you to pay another 6%. But you will pay a higher price. They want to get it down to 2%, so you pay like 108. They're not trying to drive the price of the shoes that you pay for $100 down to 90, down to 80, down to 70. That's not what they're trying to do. They want you to pay more. They just want you to pay more at a lesser clip than moving forward. So that's the thing that people get confused, def deflation and disinflation. They try to create disinflation, not deflation. 
Because deflation caused a whole other problem for the economy. Yeah, with deflation, isn't that what's like going on in Japan where like um, people that have their money in savings are being charged for leaving their money in a savings account? Because like instead of gaining interest, the interest charges them. Is that, yeah, that, that that's deep that's deflation because right. you're losing money yeah you're losing money uh as it goes goes along but the thing is that if you want to buy stuff it still costs more money costs more money costs more money and and that's a, a a big headache that and i know it's a lot of jargon and verbal judo that congress use and i think they do it on purpose they do it on purpose just to confuse the common man but that's all that that's all the Fed's trying to do. And the way, like was stated in the video, the way that you get disinflation is to curb demand. The only way you can curb demand is by because people, I mean, we've been doing this for a while. I mean, you didn't have people from the beginning of time telling people you need to save your money, save your money, save your money, save your money. They won't. Everybody know they won't. They're going to spend it. For the majority, they're going to spend their money. So the only way that they can create disinflation is by taking the demand out of the system. Only way you can take demand out of the system, you can't say, oh, you can't spend your money. You have to make the cost to use that money more expensive. That's it. So if you're using credit cards, you the cost to borrow on those credit cards is higher. The cost to buy a car is higher based on the you know monthly payments. So they have to curb the demand side so the demand will slow down so companies are not raising, keep raising the price at a higher clip. Because as long as people still go out and buy, no matter what the price is, companies are still going to raise the price because they know the demand is out there. So they're going to try to get every dollar they can. So they got to slow down the demand to slow down the rise in prices. And that's what, and that's what they're going to do. How they're going to do it? They got to take money out of people's pockets. How do, how do you take money out of people's pockets? Raising interest rate, raising unemployment. That's what's happening. So now you, before on the other video we had, we only had the news article where we just showed the snippet of the news article with him saying it. Now you just heard it out the horse's mouth himself, not calling him a horse, but now just using the proverbial, you heard it out the horse's mouth, him saying it also. So now what excuse do people have? They can't say they don't know now. They can't say, oh, well, the article probably got it misconstrued that y'all showed. Now you just heard it out of his mouth. This is what needs to happen to curb inflation. All right, guys, uh, with all that being said, um, if you have a comment, let us know down below. Hit the like button, subscribe and share. And we'll see you guys in the next video.